Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, and I'm so excited to see you another week. Another week, it depends where you are in the country right now, but either you are covered in snow or ice, <laughs> as St. Joe, Michigan is, or maybe you're enjoying some sunshine in Florida, or I have some friends over in Washington that said it's pretty darn cold there too. So what would you do when it's freezing? Well, join us on Brothers at Your Side virtually and wait till you see what we got planned today. So Brother Educator Kathy Stipe is here. Do you guys remember, gotta leave a comment about this. Remember when there was a period of time that she was on a lot. This was right during COVID when the educators were entertaining you guys every day. And there was something that she would do with certain fills. And what did she call them? I'm just curious because I recognize a lot of you here saying, yes, we are live. We are live. We are bringing your comments up today, your questions, and I'm grateful to be here. So do you remember what she called them? Okay, well, that's your question for the day. And now let's bring up Kathy Stipe. Kathy, how are you? Nice to see you. I'm good. I'm so happy to have a little bit of a warming trend here in North Florida. So <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I'll send you some ice from St. Joe just in case you want some, but I think you'll pass, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm passing on that. But. So for... I, I, I asked everyone about what is the thing that you used to do, you still do, and if to see if they recognize the name of what you used to call them. Let's see if they've got it. Um, oh, we got Hawaii in the house, Barbara Jones in Texas. Uh, so far, nobody's guessed it. Anybody guess what Kathy used to call these decorative fills that she would come up with? <laughs> I hear a little timer. All right, Kathy, you got some really fun things for us today. And I'll let you give a little hint of what you're talking about because you're taking our spirit to the next level. I am. So I know that many of us have looked at the Art Spirit app and maybe some of the projects didn't exactly appeal to you or maybe they... What I was looking at was... How can I take this and make it my own, basically? Maybe take it up a notch or two. So that's kind of what I'm doing today with a couple of things. Um, the first one that I'm going to show you what I did is this little table topper. Look at that. Look at that. So... Um, I'll switch my camera around and I'll get into my Art Spira app and I'll show you exactly the steps that I took to create that. Perfect. And while she's switching her camera around for all of you, in case you haven't noticed, download the app, but there's been a new update. There's a new gallery section. So you have to go in there and check it out. So I just want to give you a little tip on that. I have an Android device and that one automatically updated my iphone not a brother product of course but that one i actually had to restart the phone and then it updated so if you're looking at your phone and you're thinking i don't see a gallery it's brand new so pop in there and check it out and make sure that you update your phone all right uh all back to you kathy okay so i don't have the gallery view because i have not obviously updated my phone or the app in my phone but one of the things that I have found in the app that is absolutely a necessity is this little heart icon up here in the top right-hand side. Whoops. That's where I can go in and favorite different designs. And as you can see, I've got my Florida flamingos. But if I scroll on down you'll see all of these conversation hearts. Well, I have young grandchildren that are here and some of these sayings that were in there were not appropriate for them according to their parents. So I just grabbed one and I touch create and then I've already saved it, so all I need to do is say Dawn, and down at the bottom, because I have my Luminaire and my um, app all on the same network and talking to each other, it tells me my embroidery machine is my XP, so um, 
I know that that's the machine that it's going to. So I'll hit transfer. And after you hit transfer, it's going to ask if it's over, if it's okay to overwrite the data that's already stored. And I say, okay. And it doesn't take but just a second. That's how fast it is. It's done. It's at my machine. So now I'm going to move this phone out of the way for a minute. And can you still see my machine screen okay? We sure can. I'm going to my pocket of my machine, and over here is the cloud. And if I go to the cloud pocket, there is my design. So I can set it. And under here, under edit, you can make additional edits. If I wanted to size it, I can size with stitch recalculation. I can make it as big or as little as I would like. I'm not sure that looks about the size that I used in my little wall hanging. So I said, okay, but if you have a luminaire, you can do something additionally with this. I can go to the no so feature and I can choose which part of the design I don't want to sew. So I went down to where the wording is at and said, I don't want that part to sew. And I was pleasantly surprised to find out that it was completely filled in behind the lettering. So that meant I can add whatever type of lettering I want. So I just said, okay, you would go back into add and go into your fonts. And I chose font one because it was a kind of a block letter, but heavier. And then I created the wording that I wanted on them. So we'll do sweet and I did it in all caps and medium size. Set it and then you can either use your finger or stylus to move it or in this case it doesn't want to play today so I can just move it right there into place. So that was how I was able to get the hearts with the sentiment or the words that I wanted. But how did I get the fill behind it was something else I wanted to show you. So I have Sweet already hooped up, maybe a few extra threads and stuff hanging on it. But I'm going to put that on my machine and I'm going to go into my design center. So I'm just going to go back home because I don't need that part. And let's see if I can. I wasn't thinking whenever I set this up. So you may get a little bit of a glare, but I've got to move my machine away from the wall. So in Design Center, I want to do a scan. And we have three different types of scans. So an image scan is what I want for this because it's going to take a snapshot of what I have in my hoop. So I'm going to say scan and say OK. And I'm hoping that this doesn't hit the wall in the back. No walls. <laughs> no walls. It's only my nine and a half by nine and a half inch hoop. So basically what I did was I kind of followed the directions for the project. It was a fall project. It was a table topper with leaves on it. And I thought, well, I need something, a table topper, but I want something for Valentine's. So I've got it scanned and I'm going to darken this up a little bit so hopefully you can see it on camera better on my screen and there's several different ways that I can do this how I did it was I went into my line properties 
and I chose no so, and I chose a point to point connection. And I basically just kind of went and drew me a square. Let's undo. So this is kind of, that's kind of like my, what do you call it? Kind of like my invisible fence. And now I can come in and I can go into my fills and just choose whichever one I want. So I'm just going to choose the cross hatching one for right now. And I can take my bucket and I can just, well, that's, so now you can see it a little bit better. There's my fill. I can go in and grab my eraser and erase out all this that's in the middle of the heart. So what that's a great idea, Kathy. You know, I I think there's so many times and I've seen uh, comments from people when they're working on my design center and they're like, I can't get my shape around what I'm trying not to embroider on the eraser button. Brilliant. So that's one way. And I would finish, you know, just erasing all of this and maybe using my magnifying tool if I needed to, to see better. But what I love about Brother Machines is that they give us more than one way to do something. So, um, so this is one way. And so now I could stitch the fill in the background and it would be around the outside of my design. Let's get a better close-up look of that. So see how it didn't stitch over my design, but just all the way around. But there's another way that I can do that. So I'm going to go back home and clear everything out or cancel this out. What I did was I had, I'm going to grab, grab my heart that I had saved. So you can, once you transfer these designs over to your machine out of Artspira, some you can save and some you cannot save. So what I have kind of figured out is that if it was a free design, it'll allow me to save it. But if it's one that's through the Artspira Plus paid subscription, it will not let me save that design to my machine. So um, that's just one of the things that I kind of figured out. So I'm going to go in edit. And I'm going to make a custom stamp or shape. Nope, not around that. Let's select the heart. I want a custom shape around the heart. And then I added just a little bit of, I call it insurance space around it. And save that to memory. And that's going to be in my design center. So now I'm going to go back home because I know that my Square is eight inches. I'm going to go into my design center. I'm going to pick my square shape. I'm going to size it. And I love this 10 key touchpad. So I know my square is eight inches. So I'm setting the height at eight. I'm setting the width at eight. And now I'm going to go back into shapes and up here to my custom shape tab. And I'm going to bring in my heart. So there's my parameters now. My The outside line is my square of my quilt topper. The heart is the design that's already stitched. And then again, I'm just going to go in and pick my decorative fill. So whichever one you want to pick, I mean, we have, what is it, 48 choices now. I'm going to take a look at number 47 because I don't think I have stitched that one yet. 
And then I'm just going to drop that in between the heart and the outline. I want to make sure that I have said, set the outlines to not sew. So when I go to next, this is where I set all of my stitch preferences for my quilting fill. The first thing I usually do is go change the thickness to a single run. And then I can also change the size of the pattern. And I would set that. And then whenever I go into embroidery, that's where my projector would come in handy. And I can project right directly on my fabric and make sure that I'm getting this in the direction that it needs to be. You can't see where it's moving on my, on my fabric, but I can. So you'll just have to trust me on this one. So I've got it positioned where it is in the hoop. And now I would just be able to stitch. So there's two different ways now that you can position your pattern fills to quilt the background. And that's one of the things that they did not show in the Artspira app. So let's go back home and clear that. And I will take that off because I have another project that I want to show. Actually, I have a couple that I want to show. Oh, excuse me. I just keep kicking my camera. <laughs> We're just moving around. We're just moving around. So this was not a project in there, but it was a design. And actually, it's this is made up of four repeats design. So this is what the design looks like. I just repeated it four times and stitched it on linen. To oh, make that is absolutely linen. gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So it's one that you multiplied three, three more times. Right. So I'm going to get my um, app back over here so you can see. So I'm going to go cancel, cancel again. I'm going back to my favorites. So like I said, this one particular design, I still don't remember what category they had it listed under. But I went into all embroidery designs and I just did a search for hearts and that finally came up. But I'm going to take this design and say create. And because I want you to notice the little crown that's right here, that means it's part of the Artspira Plus or paid subscription. So unless you have that, you won't find it in your Artspira. So I'm going to say done. I'm going to transfer again. And like I said, I just can't believe how fast all of this stuff transfers. It's already over there. So if I go to embroidery, I can go into my pocket and find my little cloud pocket. And there's my design. It comes in in PEN format. That means that it's a locked format and I really can't, I can't open it in software. I can't do any of those things. What I can do is I can take this design. Oops, I, every time I move, I keep, I'm going to leave it set right there because I want to size it. I can use sizing with stitch recalculation and 
this next one that I make, this one, the first one, the original was made at the, oh, I don't know. It's been so long since I made that. Maybe it was made a little bit bigger, but I know I want to use my 10 and 5 8 by 10 and 5 8 inch hoop. So if I make it just a little over five inches for each piece, that should work. I like to turn on the grid on my screen because I use that. Do you see the red? Can you see the red bounding box around that design? Does that show up? Yeah, we can see that great. Okay, because I use those lines to line up with the quarter marks the heavier lines that are on my screen when I turn my grid on. And I put it just right at that upper right hand corner. And then I can duplicate it and rotate it. And then I move this down. So basically all I've done is I've repeated this four times and sometimes I would zoom in and make sure that my alignment over here was right. And it looks like this one needed to go over one more click. But that's the advantage to having all these nice tools or features of these machines that I can get up close and personal and really make sure. Whoops. That was not what I meant to do. I had my pan, I thought I had my pan feature on and I did not. So I'm going to, I've got it on now. So no, this is where undo would be good in this editing part. <laughs> I agree. I do that all the time, by the way. So I feel so much better, Kathy. <laughs> So I'm going to go back down to 100%. So we've got that set. And then I just duplicated that four times. So one more copy of it. You rotate. You move. But this was the design that I was working on when I found out that some of the the designs I could not save in my machine's memory. Because, you know, sometimes you'll be working maybe a little bit after dinner and you think, well, I'll just get the design set up and then I'll stitch it in the morning. Not with this design. You have to stitch it once you get it all created or you have to do it a second time. So you can't, so Amanda wants to know, you can't save it to the machine then, right? Not this paid design. There, okay. So I'll Thank show you. you what happens. If I go to save memory, it says there is a pattern that cannot be saved included in my design. So that means that it's a, it's from the Artspira plus paid side of designs. And there, you cannot save them to your machine. Okay, perfect. Thanks for that explanation. So that's how this design right here was created. That's absolutely beautiful. How much time does it save about? Did it take you to do that? Let's see. When we go into embroidery, it's a 60-minute stitch out. Beautiful. But it's all one I did it all in one color because I went in and removed parts of the design. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. Can you see inside the heart there is a white flower embroidered in there? I went under edit and to know so and I took that white flower out. Oh, wow. 
So can you so just I, move your camera to the right a little bit so they can see where the no-so button is in case somebody is a total newbie to this? Wrong Zoom. <laughs> wrong way go. on the... So we'll go under... I'll, I'll pick this next part. I have to open each design up individually or each quarter up and go under edit. Come on. Cursor work. No so. Choose the color that you don't want to sew and just say, touch the button down at the bottom and say, okay. And then that removes it from the color sequence so that once I get to embroidery, then all I'm going to have is just that one lavender color. We'll do it one more time before I move on because I've got some other fun things to share. So we'll go to edit, no sew, touch the color I don't want, which is a white, touch no sew and say okay. There was only one that did not have the white taken out. So do you see that one white that I have left? If you have a machine that doesn't have the no sew feature on it, what you can do is you should have a needle with a plus and minus on your embroidery machine screen somewhere, whatever model you are using, and you can just advance through that color stock. So that's a way around it if you do not have the no so. I love that. But my husband is a big candle fan, so I thought while I'm decorating for Valentine's, I might as well make him a candle mat. Will you hold that up one more time so everyone can just see that? I know there's a, I see a few more people that came in brand new. Absolutely gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. I just love little linen things. So this was a linen that I backed with a fusible um, stabilizer, a, a woven fusible. Well, look at the back compared to the front. They're both beautiful. The back doesn't look too shabby, does it? No. Okay, now look at the front again. Yeah, that's gorgeous. So to finish off the edge, what I did was take whatever seam sealant you use, and I did this while it was still in the hoop, and I just went around the edges of the satin stitch. And the next day I took it out after it was, Did I lose you? See something if if we can do this. We've got this whole big design. I'm wondering if I can make a custom shape. Oh, I think I would have to group them all. This is, I should have tried this before I got on here live, but let's all play we, together. We love new fun things. Look at that. So it made a custom shape. So I'm going to change the distance just a little bit. And I'm going to save that to my machine's memory. Because oh. I will now go in and create a cut file because that's less than my 12 by 12. So mm -hmm. now I can make a cut file that I could then send to my scan and cut and cut this out without having to do it with scissors. Wouldn't wow. that be awesome? Yeah, that's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. You got a few questions about this coming in. Uh, Amanda wants to know, can you do all of this on our Spira so it could be saved? Can, oh, can you turn it into that design in our Spira? Um, I didn't try, but you probably could. I'm not going to so say for sure. Because I... Annette wants to know what stabilizer you used. It was a woven fusible. If I can get it real close to the camera. Oh, wow. A woven, a woven fusible. fusible. Uh, Kathy, Sharon wants a few more tips 
she's like, okay, help us out here. How did you put this together in the hoop? Uh, tell them a little bit more about the process. I have a feeling this is going on a lot of Valentine's tables, including mine. Okay. So one fourth of this design is in Artspira Plus. I duplicated it and rotated it and put the four pieces together to form one complete Beautiful design piece and then i stitched it out my machine when i'm in embroidery has something that's called monochromatic sewing so the little sewing spool with just the one thread so then it grays out everything i press start and i come back 53 minutes later and it's done Wow, gorgeous. So, you know, and it's just on a, this is a linen blend fabric. I think it's linen cotton blend, but I just love this fabric. So I use it for a lot of things. That's beautiful. So the, everyone's trying to find a workaround about not having to uh, sew all in one. So Linda wants to know, could you just leave the machine on and go back later to stitch it out? I would assume, yes, it's going to stay there yeah. as long as you don't turn it off. And well, I can tell you a little secret. I set it up one night and when it wouldn't save, I just left my machine on all night long. Perfect. I think that's what Linda's thinking. Of. Linda, good idea. And Lenny said, so, okay, this is a good question because everyone knows that brother machines are so awesome. A lot of times on the higher end, when you turn it off, when you turn it back on, it will say, do you want to go back to your design? Which thankfully I'm doing an lace one right now that's 385 minutes. I'm only on 210. <laughs> Every time I turn it on, it says, do you want to go back to that point? Uh, what about this one? Have you tried that? No, but we can do it real quick. You want to try? Should we try, Lenny? Let's try it and see if what happens when she turns it off and turns it back on. It'll say, remove your hoop. <laughs> I took my hoop off. Marianne, uh, this was from Artspira. So any machine that you can use with Artspira that has a hoop big enough for this, you should be able to do that. Still Air, Luminaire. I saw somebody asking about the Dream Machine that does not have a I capability like. with Artspira. No, it did not ask me. But maybe okay. if I had been, I would have stitched a couple of stitches, maybe. I'm oh, not sure. Never thought about that. Okay, we'll try it again, Lenny, and let you know. Or you try it and let us know. How's that? <laughs> Everyone's saying super, super. Lenny said the same thing you said. Yeah, you would have done a few stitches, maybe. Well, somebody try it real quick while we're doing the rest of these and let us know in the comments. It's called the Brother Team. Okay, so my next one, let's see if I can get my trusty old phone back over here. Oh, Patty, that's a good idea. She has her still air on eco mode. Great idea. Great idea. Okay, back to you, Kathy. Okay, so I'm going back into my favorites because I know I saved this one favorite. The table topper is called Fall Leaves Table Topper. Then there's one that's called Wall Heart Wall Decoration. So I love the little stuffed hearts. And I'll be quite honest. Maybe I shouldn't always be so honest all the time, but I did try to stick some little jute in there at the top to make them hanging. But when I was turning them, I used the jute to try to pull out that point, and it just pulled the jute out. So I just left it as is. But this design, basically is the heart outline, and then it allows you to put the fabric, the backing fabric on top, and then it only stitches part of the way around. So I used that to send to my machine. So 
I'll pull it out of the green again. And you can see both. So I'll just leave the phone there and kind of work around it. So I've touched it and I'm going to set it. And I use this no so feature all the time. Nope, that's the clay brown. So notice how when I select a color, it comes up in my little preview window. So I know that I'm removing the color stops for what I actually intended. So now I'm left with just two colors. Well, actually three. I've got a placement stitch to stitch it on my stabilizer. I've got where it stitches the base fabric or the front of the fabric down. And then I added some other designs that were in um, Artspira. So I have the little love. I have some that are just plain because, you know, everybody seems to be doing these little tiered trays in their tables for decorations now. And so I wanted to jump on that bandwagon, but I don't have a tier. I have a long hand carved wooden platter type thing that belonged to my grandparents that I use. And I just decorate that with all of these little things that I'm stitching out and just put them on there. But I want you to oh, see. Oh, look at that. Do you see that sort of plaid look? Yeah, how'd you do that? This is what you were referring to earlier in the program when we first came on. How did I make Oh, yeah. did anybody, I don't think anybody guessed it, to be honest. I'm looking through the comments. Did anyone guess? Does everyone remember when Kathy used to do these? It's one word. It's one word with her decorative fills. She could fill a whole book and give you a hint. It could go in the kitchen, but it's sewing. So it's going to go in the sewing room. Does anybody and remember? And it was around Christmas. Yeah. It was so, in December. Anybody? Oh, Michelle. Michelle's first at it. Good job, Michelle. I'd give you a prize, but I don't have one. So just you get a kudos for remembering. And Christy, everybody's remembering now. Maureen, Miss Maureen, got it. All right. <laughs> okay, so I just, I'm making a, a, a custom shape. Oops. We're going to cancel that because the one thing the first thing that stitches is a square to stitch it to your fabric. So I have to turn that off. So I'm just left with my heart shape. And then I can make my make my custom shape. And I just made it a little bit bigger. Let's do this a different way so that you can really see how this is done. So in my design center, I'm just going to fill the whole hoop with this fill. We've got red, so we'll go in here and we'll, I use um, the built-in stitch 006, said OK. OK again, touched my flood fill and filled my hoop. I'm going to take that all the way to embroidery. And then I'm going to go to add down at the bottom. Go back to my design center. I'm going to go back to my shapes. I'm going to get the same built in custom fill 006. I'm going to change it. We'll change it to green just because it's easier to see on screen. I'm going to take my paint bucket. Fill my whole page. This time when I go in to set the properties, I'm going to take the size all the way down to 50%. So it's a smaller crosshatch and set it on top of the other one. So now can you see or should I zoom in just a little bit to my screen? 
Can you see the plaid that it creates? It's gorgeous. Oh my gosh, that would look so good on a sleeve. <laughs> Squirrel. So that's what I did with the little pink heart. I don't know if you can tell very much. They're beautiful. Christy said she loves it too. I do too. It's beautiful. It's so rich. Can you imagine that on a bag, like a little handbag? That would be gorgeous, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we'll clear that off. So this was a last minute, like I did it this morning after 8 o'clock. <laughs> was it before coffee or after coffee? That's, it was, that's it was always during, the question. <laughs> during coffee. I had already had two cups of coffee, so it was okay to start. <laughs> I enlarged the heart and put love bug. And I made it out of fleece. Oh. Because I've got little grands that love anything squishy and they love their stuffies. And my daughter in law had sent me a message this morning that the baby is sick and running 104 degrees temperature. So I'm going to go do a handoff a kid for a stuffy after we're done here today. So I wanted to make him something nice and warm and squishy from grandma sending love. So um, I did have a step out. This is what the heart shaped. It leaves the opening. I wanted you to be able to see the opening here so that you can turn it and stuff it. And when I cut them out, I left myself this little tab so that whenever I was turning them to stitch them closed, that gave me a little extra to work with. So that's just a little helpful tip. tip. Leave yourself a tab. That is a good idea, especially when it's something small like that. I always have a difficult time with that. You're trying to squeeze it around without breaking a nail or anything else. I have a lot of pointy tools that help to turn it, but uh, that's a really good tip. So there was another project. This I have done before because I gave them as Christmas gifts to my family. Um, not this past Christmas, the Christmas before. But it's a project in Art Spira called a wreath scarf. And I don't know if they're popular everywhere, but they certainly are in the South. This is the one from the Art Spira magazine that was geared for somebody's birthday. So this was stitched out just as it is in the Art Spira app. And the only reason I went ahead and did this is because we have a Tyler in our family. Oh, perfect. <laughs> but I need another one. Um, and I can show it to you whenever I get back on screen and we're not on the machine because it's hanging on my wall. These are so cute. Everybody's saying these are such great ideas. So this was the original Art Spira mug rug. And you've got all the directions for creating it and if you didn't like the cup you could change it to something different i just used a red fabric put that um plaid fill on it and use different colors for the cup so that it fits in more with my valentine's theme so i know that we sometimes look at them and say uh but think about it a minute. There's some awesome things that you can do. Last but not least, there is a, it's a zipper bag. And I believe in my app, it's called the Hula Girl zipper bag. We'll go back to my favorites because I know I... Yeah, Happy Hula Pouch. So I just used the main zipper bag 
and it gives you all the instructions that you need for the hoop size down to what size zipper you need. And then it walks you step by step through doing it. You don't have to stitch the Hula Girl design. And I will confess that I missed a step, so I won't show you the inside. But I added pattern fills to that as well. And then I just put Kathy's stuff. That is so cute. So as you can tell, there's, I've got a lot of stuff in my favorites. I mean, my favorites list goes on and on. <laughs> you have a really long favorites list. That is definitely for sure. Okay. So I'll turn back around and say hello. Um. <laughs> so everyone can see what's been happening here. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun reading the comments. Uh, everybody is loving these projects. You always have so much inspiration, Kathy. There's a ton. How many? You so just I, gave us how many? Oh, look at that. What is one, that? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I don't think it was enough. <laughs> so um, there is my wreath sash. I brought this oh. in off my front door. And it's just a basic sash out of cotton fabric. You can make it however long. This was just, I think, 54 inch wide fabric that I cut and you put a diagonal on one end and then you just embroider them. For my family, I did an initial, so their last name initial, and then something that was, you know, kind of geared to what they like. Right. Like. I have some a family member that travels a lot, so I put their last name initial and then adventure awaits on the other side. You know, so when you're looking at the Art Spira projects, don't look at just exactly what they have put on there. Take a second look at it and see if you can make it personalized for you. Is that's a good idea? All I'm saying. So. That's a very good idea. And, and you know, I think what you showed today is so important because I think sometimes we look at a certain project and we're like, I just don't. Well, like you said, you had a kid, you have something in the family named Tyler. Well, we don't all have that. <laughs> but yeah. it's so easy to change it around. It is. So I just noticed a question. How do you save it to your favorites? Let me explain that. Um. Let's see if I can bring my phone. Thanks, over. Sharon. That's a good question. And if anybody else has questions, we still have a little bit of time. So feel free to drop those in the comments. Okay, let me bring you up by yourself here. There you go. See if we okay, can. Trying to get it. There is a heart inside of a box right up here at the top of the screen. So when you have the design up that you like, so let's say I chose that design, then there's a heart right up here that I can touch. And then that saves it to my favorites. Perfect. So when I sure, go back to my favorites around now, with the app too. Let me see, bring you back up there and there's all the favorites. Yep. Everything that I've liked or put in, put a heart by. Put in the favorites. Patty says, uh, <laughs> yes, brother does give us a lot of fun things to play with. I agree. So I would love to know in the comments. I saw some of you asking, can you rewatch this? Of course. So if you go back to, depends if you're on YouTube or Facebook, I find it easier to rewatch on YouTube. So go to Brother So's YouTube channel, click on the live. There's a button at the top that says live. Click on that and you can go back to these. And I'm also adding all of these replays and future calendar on AngelaWolf.com. If you go to the top and click on classes and events, a little header will show up, live events. You can go in there and see who's coming on for the next little while. And also you can search by name on the website to find, go back and find Kathy. <laughs> hey, Kathy, you got yes. any big events coming up? Because uh, speaking of, I haven't seen you in a little while and I have seen a surge in 
brother fans that have joined the Serger Masterclass, which they get for free awesome. when they buy the Airflow Serger, which you and the other Kathy and myself produced uh, last year, which that class, 14 weeks, I think it was 14? 14 weeks, because they're full one hour sessions, like almost having like surging, weekly surging club in your own yeah. house on the computer. <laughs> That you can rewind if you need to. You can rewind. So uh, you have anything coming up uh, in your life as far as teaching or going anywhere that everyone needs to know about? Well, I will be in um, Kansas at one of our dealers. It's actually a Quilt Broadery 101 class. It's at, um, I believe the name of the shop is the Quilting Bee, if I'm not mistaken. Hang on, I'm going to double check that because I don't want to give wrong information. <laughs> Terry says, how much snow do we have? Uh, two foot in St. Joe, Michigan and add ice now. So yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> Beehive quilt shop. Beehive quilt shop. In Wellington, Kansas. I will be teaching, um, Quilt Broadery 101, so it's a little project that they learn how to do the edge-to-edge um, -edge quilting, and then we're going to do the second day as it's a class called MDC It, so it's a deep dive into my design center and creating Ooh. that way. But when I was talking to the owner last week, she said, my mom remembered you are the surger girl. <laughs> The surgery queen. Can we incorporate surging into this? So instead of finishing our project with a faux binding technique, we're going to finish it. And this is not the project. This was just one that I had at home. Let's, at least I can turn it straight up. But oh, let me see. see. Oh, look at that. See how I've used that to edge my project? So it kind of looks like a binding, especially if you did it in a solid color, but it matched my thread colors of my project. So it was a variegated thread that I had. So that's a technique that they're going to get to try um, when I go in February. Awesome. So visit your brother dealer. Uh, you never know what's going on there. You never know who's visiting, which educator is going to be around there. Everybody's saying thank you, thank you. Oh, thanks, Natalie. Yeah, mark your calendar also. I think at the same time you're going to be gone. Fabric to Fashion will launch. It's not a brother product, but brother is sponsoring it. It's a reality TV show, February 8th and 9th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Patty says, come back and show us that edging. <laughs> Gorgeous. I think she wants you to come back for a tutorial, oh. too. <laughs> it's a basic three thread wide, just a basic three thread wide stitch on your serger. You, you make the basic look so fabulous. More recipes, recipes for serging, recipes for sewing. Oh, Kathy, this go. has been such a pleasure. And those of you watching, would you do us a favor? We're on Brother Sew's YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. You'll never miss a show. If you're on Facebook, follow so Brother knows you like the shows. And leave a comment and tell us which project there was your favorite. I'm going to have to go with all of them. But my major favorite was that unique lace design that you turned into a small table. That was so, that is so rich, Kathy. This one. Yeah. That one for sure. So I don't know what you want to call that one, but I'm going to call it the lace something. <laughs> I called it a candle mat. So now I can get all of this out of my sewing room and I can go decorate my table now again for, for Valentine's. There you, there you go. There you go. Well, I'm going to plan an hour so I can just embroider it and have coffee. Maybe I'll do it during a live show. I'll just let it embroider in the background. <laughs> there you go. Oh, well, Kathy, it was Another. great to see you. Great Good to see you. you. And everyone here, thank you for watching. Brother, thank you for letting your brand ambassadors and brother educators take over your page. And thanks for such great products that we get to sew on, right? <laughs> no, right? So. And don't forget to double check your Artspira app. There has been an update to it. So if you don't see the update, I had to turn my iPhone on and off. iPhone is not a brother product, but 
uh, I just have to say it. The other phone did fine. It automatically updated. So if you didn't, just restart your phone and you'll probably be just fine. So I have to restart my phone. So. <laughs> All right, everyone. See you uh, until next time. Happy sewing. Yep. Bye. Bye. Thank you.